Stop hitting the cervixes of your female partners. Cervix hitting is a total misconception of female sexual response resulting from watching pornography. New research in the Journal of Sexual Medicine has highlighted how women feel about the cervix during intercourse. Link in the description. In this video, I will give you the details and a bonus. During intercourse, the vagina is tenting. Uh, what does that mean? Stay tuned to learn something surprising. My name is Dr. Stefan Buntrock. I'm a board-certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. Recently, the results of an online survey were published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine. 441 American women were given anatomical diagrams of the body. They marked two sorts of areas, erogenous zones and aversive zones. Aversive means they disliked being touched in these areas. It was the goal of this research to establish a reference for the female population in the US. From the thousands of comments I have received on my videos during the past years, I know that many men try to reach the cervix during intercourse. They believe hammering onto it is a mark of excellence of their performance. I did a video about it, by the way. Here's the link. However, this belief needs to be refined. Only 22.7% of the women marked the cervix as receptive for erotic stimuli. This is one woman in five. One in five is not a lot. On the contrary, when looking at the areas of the vaginal canal, the cervix was the number one spot where women don't want to be stimulated. However, this number was small. 6.8% answered that it was an aversive area. This means you have to talk about it. Could be she likes it, but chances are rather small. Most probably, she doesn't care about the cervix or your performance may be rated poorly by her if you hurt her. By the way, I have also received comments of men stating that every woman wants to be hurt during sex. I strongly disagree with that opinion. I wouldn't be able to give you up-to-date numbers as research on that area is scarce, but according to the Kinsey data from 1953, Roughly 10% of the women are into the pain thing. This means that you should be very cautious when making assumptions about your partner without asking her. But how likely is it to reach the cervix at all? It depends on individual anatomical conditions, but before I explain to you how the vagina uses tenting to avoid direct cervical contact, I want you to take a moment to like this video and subscribe to your channel. If you were sitting in front of me in a room and I'd be giving this talk, you would likely applaud in the end. And even if you didn't really agree with my opinion, you would still clap your hands because everybody else would. Because you would respect the work I had invested to give that lecture. In the digital world, applause means likes and subscribes. So please, it doesn't cost you anything. Click on that icon in the right-hand corner here and give the video a thumbs up. You know, we used to be more polite in this world. For some reason, the internet often brings out the worst in people. Many are quick to leave dislikes and negative comments. Also, I receive a lot of them. People with negative attitudes love to express them while supporters all too often remain silent. I think it should be the other way around the world would be a better place. So please, help to make the world a better place. So what is tenting? It means that the vagina undergoes specific changes during sexual arousal. One can say it enlarges to accommodate the penis and the ejaculate. It's a smart move of nature, because ejaculate has to undergo some changes before sperm cells can start the race to the egg. We call this process capacitation and it takes roughly 30 minutes. PSA is involved in that process. Yes, the prostate-specific antigen, the very same that is used as a tumor marker for prostate cancer. It has a physiologic function leading to liquefaction of the ejaculate. Female sexual arousal causes the release of VIP, 
vasoactive intestinal peptide. It relaxes vaginal smooth muscle. The pelvic floor muscles contract and the cervix is lifted away, shaping a cul-de-sac for accommodating the penis. This is what we call tenting. How do we know that? Well, science did MRI scans of people having intercourse in an MRI machine. Here comes a surprising fact. During intercourse, you never hit directly onto the cervix. Depending on the respective position, it's either the upper or lower end of the cervix, but never frontally, meaning the cervix is not struck head on during penetration. In fact, you may never come into contact with the cervix at all. The average penis is 5.1 to 5.8 inches in length. I did a video about it. Depending on the woman, that would not be sufficient to reach the cervix. According to MRI measurements, the anterior vaginal length increased from initially 3 inches to 5.1 inches during intercourse. The posterior vaginal length increased from initially 4.3 inches to 5.1 inches during intercourse. 5.1 inches penis. 5.1 inches vagina. Got it? Nature has a plan. It's like the lock and a key. It has to fit. Being average is the key to reproductive success, offering the greatest number of compatible partners. Giant penises meeting average vaginas wouldn't make a match very often. So what about other erogenous zones on a woman? This video will reveal them. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.